Welcome back to another battery charger review. I have the Nightcore F2 in for testing, and this was sent in via Nightcore for a review. So we're going to go through what's included. Everything's laid out there. We'll just look at the front of the box just to give you an idea of the features with this one. So we have a two-bay charger with this. It's a super compact intelligent charging just for lithium cells and you'll see on the side it will list out the types of cell that you can use right the way up to the two six six fifties we also have the uh, two USB outputs so the flexible power bank as we see on the side that's another selling point of this just on the back of the packaging again just going over a few more features and this is pretty interesting I was quite keen to get this in to look at because I didn't have a chance to look at the F1 which came out I believe last year. Now you get an included short uh, micro USB 3 type B cable. It's not as bad as it sounds because you can use the normal micro USB cables with this as well. And you get a couple of fairly thick silicone bands. One's yellow and one's black in a Nightcore colour so they do stretch quite a bit. And there's your warranty card also included. This is the user manual. Now what I've done is because the font's pretty small, a bit too small for me, I've just got online and uh, downloaded the manual and I'll put it on the screen for you so you can have a look through the specs. You can pause that and look through the functions and features on the charger. I'm going to go through it in quite a bit of detail anyway just to give you a good idea of what's going on with this including some tests on the charging speed as well. It's probably the most interesting mini charger I've looked at to date. Now looking at the body itself, quite a very small size really. I've put them on the screen for you. Lightweight, um, it's about as small as you're going to get for a charger which has two bays. So they're really designing this as something which could be taken with you or takes up minimal space. I didn't use the F1 but you can see it looks perhaps slightly similar to sticking two F1 chargers together. Sliders seem quite smooth and they are gold plated contacts on this and this is your two USB outputs. It's unusual to see two on a charger such as this and there's your input there for the Type 3 uh, micro USB 3 cable. Now, if you're wondering about this particular connector you can see these on hard drives and memory card readers. It's not the most common one to be honest but as I'm showing you here you can use it with a normal micro USB cable. So there isn't really any major disadvantage to that. My personal choice would have been to go with a type C cable because it's uh, becoming the normal standard connector now. You can see here we have raised contact points. There's the gold plating. Just helps to ensure we get a good connection. Build on this is pretty good. Have no real complaints. It's sort of semi-transparent. It's not, although it looks black here in the picture, you can actually see the lights um, flashing through. Um, the casing which is useful particularly if you're looking at it from the side. Now I'm just going to put a 26650 cell in and you can see the light flashing there, the LED and that's the battery voltage indicator. I'll show it to you from the other side. You have one for each channel. You see the first digit flashes to give you the voltage and then the second digit. So you get three flashes for three volts, five flashes for 3.5. It tends to round down so if you're up to uh, say 4.15 volts it will flash 4.1 but it's good enough to be able to test batteries and get a good idea on what their voltage is without using a separate battery tester and I think it's a really good feature I've seen it on a few Nightcore products and I'm surprised that nobody else has caught on with that but it's a really good idea and it gives you a, a good voltage indication of a battery so you can know if you need to charge a cell before you even plug it in so I'm just going to put a few cells in here Again, you'll see every time you put a cell in, you'll get that voltage flashing up. And some of the torches do that now as well. I looked at the head torch recently and the Concept One. That's also, they have that feature too. So rather than just having the LED show you the charge display, which is fine and useful for that as well, that is something which I genuinely would find quite handy just to test batteries as well, get a reasonable idea of what their charge condition is. And the three power level indications, um, one, two or three flashing with the LEDs. If it's charging or if it's in the power bank mode, they'll just gradually go out over time. That gives you an idea of how much charge time you have left or how much um, capacity is left in the battery when you're using it as a power bank. I'm just going to put the silicone band on. It's quite grippy. Now, the point about the batteries with this is that because the contact points are raised, you're probably going to need to put this silicone band on if you are traveling around with this perhaps in a backpack or a bag 
because there's a good chance that the batteries will come off. You only really need one, to be honest, in the middle. Um, you've probably got the two as a spare, but uh, if you've got it on the table or a desk, you probably won't need to use them if it's just lying there and it's flat because um, they hold in place reasonably well. I didn't use the F1, as I said, but the springs seem reasonably good at providing enough tension, even for smaller batteries. You can see here, if I insert a smaller lithium ion cell, it will default to half an amp charging. You can see the charge indicators going on the back. And that's because it has contact points on the sliders, so it knows if a longer cell is inserted, such as this particular one here, the 18650. It usually starts off at a slightly slower charge, and then as you can see here, it's moved right up to the one amp charging. Obviously that will depend on the condition of the battery. If it needs uh, a full charge, obviously if it's partially charged, it won't go up to the full charging speed. And I've put the second cell in here, and you can see we're getting two amps. So we get one amp per channel, and that's pretty good for such a small compact charger. This is the battery level indicator going here, and you get one for each channel. So you can see exactly what the charge state is, or at least a reasonable idea compared to a single LED. Now I'm going to be doing some tests now, because um, I did try and read a few reviews online, but it wasn't entirely clear what happened if you're using it as a power bank or using the pass-through. So what happens with the power bank function is when you start putting the batteries in, um, one battery will give less power output through the power bank than if you insert two. So you'll see a boost in the uh, performance using two cells, but obviously it's going to depend on the condition of the cells, if they're fully charged or at least mostly charged, and the device itself. So look, but this particular phone doesn't need a very high charge, but it's gone up anyway to about 1.44. If you start to uh, lose the capacity on one cell, you've put a cell in which isn't very highly charged, then you're going to get a slightly slower charge rate. You can see one of these has gone down to the one. So if you swap out and put uh, more fully charged cells in, you're going to get a better charge rate going through to the devices. So what I'm going to try and do now is see how much I can get out of each port maximum. It seems to be just over one amp if you're using both at the same time, but I can get just over two amps out of a, a single port. I've got two devices charging. These are fully charged batteries, LG cells. So that's actually quite a decent performance. So what I suggest with this is if you need fast charging on something or faster charging is don't connect to two because you'll probably drop down to just over an amp on each. You can see here just over an amp for each one, so it's splitting the charge output which is fine that's exactly what you'd expect that's still a reasonable charge rate now another point which might be interesting is what happens if you plug in a power source and you're trying to charge batteries as well as use the pass through and i've just plugged it in now so what happens is it diverts the power some of it to charging the cells and it still um, provides some charge although greatly reduced on one channel to the devices so there wouldn't be much point trying to charge two batteries and two devices but if you were charging say uh, two batteries you still get a half decent charge although not that fast for one but if you're charging one battery and uh, using the pass through for a device that would work quite well just going back to the smaller cells now just to see how that stacks up again half an amp charging per channel so the pass-through function is quite useful, but um, obviously use a bit of common sense with that. You're not going to get uh, a huge charging speed with um, lots of devices attached to it. And if you put an AA cell in, nothing happens. It's just a very small current goes through and there's no problems with reverse polarity. It has protection for that as well. Now I'm just testing the difference between using the supplied cable and a normal micro USB cable and the supplied one slightly quicker but the speed difference is really so minor that honestly wouldn't say there'd be any real issues using a micro USB instead of the USB 3 type B so I wouldn't worry about that myself. What I'm going to do now is test the termination on the cells just to see what that comes in at around about 4.18. Next cell we're going to charge that one up see how that goes obviously with modern chargers believe it or not not all of them do get a decent charge sometimes they can undercharge sometimes slightly overcharge 4.17 4.18 it's not quite as high as some chargers but the charging is good but this 
there's no issues to report with charging just the normal um, batteries with this you can't use the lithium iron phosphates with this charger i'm discharging a uh, 26650 to see what the efficiency is and i got just over 3000 milliamp hours out of that which is actually quite good it's not as good as a dedicated power bank but the conversion rate is actually quite good on this it's a slight draw when it's plugged in and the leds are on i didn't detect any charge going through once it had terminated though quick practical solar charging test as you can see it's not the best day for solar charging but i've put the panel out the sun does come through occasionally you can get quite good rates off of this particular panel but what happens is obviously the sun gets covered with heavy cloud and you lose the charging you need that half an amp charging to get this going but i didn't disconnect it or reconnect anything and move the panel around and it restarted without any issue so i'm not seeing any problems at all with solar charging subject to having enough light to charge it this is definitely a charger which I would find very useful for solar charging too and I can see that appealing to quite a few people. I perhaps would have liked to have had the ability to charge nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cells and honestly think that type C is the way to go for all of these devices now it's a much more durable connector and it's becoming much more common particularly on phones and other devices so that's something i would change not too much else that i dislike about it the voltage indicator is very useful as a power bank it also works very well and it's quite respectable to get up to one amp per port charging so i think a lot of people are going to quite like this one um, just as a general purpose charger and power bank but also something which you can take with you very portable doesn't take up much space and provides decent charging on lithium cells but if you've got one of these or you've used the f1 leave a comment below let me know what you think and i'll catch up with you in my next video review very shortly